sun setting is probably the biggest recent issue for Bungie. In this video, I'd like to discuss issues they're attempting to address through this solution, the pros and cons to this solution from their point of view, how they could have done this different or easier, what the new system affects and how, and one modification that Bungie could implement to the current system that would keep the community happy through replaying old content. The reason that Bungie has implemented the sunsetting solution is to solve power creep issues with new and upcoming weapons. To make new seasonal equipment more viable, they feel that season new seasonal equipment aren't getting the same level of interest from players as their old pinnacles and wanted to try and find a way to make that viable. They would like to create a reason to grind. Destiny is a grinding game and they want you out there pushing for the new loot and want to make something exciting that people want to work for. And they're also trying to prevent a stale playing environment by changing things up. Alright, let's go over our pros and cons. First off, our pros. This is going to create a reason to grind for new content. You're going to need to go out and get the new seasonal gear, whatever the new seasonal weapons are, armor. You're going to have to do it to get the light level to stay relevant. This is also going to make the new seasonal equipment viable as, well, it's the more powerful gear. And it's probably going to have perks that are going to draw you to it as well. This is going to change user's playstyle because you're not going to be able to use your mind benders in trials per se. You'll have to go out and find a new shotgun because light level is everything on trials, gear wise anyways and failure to keep it up to date after a season or even two would be enough to put you in a low echelon where you just get plowed over merely because of light level. We saw that in the beginning when they had the artifact light in play and it was already enough to make it very difficult. And also Bungie sees this as a solution to power creep because as the light level goes out the items get their day in the sun and move past. For the cons Weapons and armor that you previously master worked won't be viable in the new pinnacle activities. Meaning, the stuff that you master worked to help you get better stat rolls for your armor in PvP, or that master worked weapon that you created to get extra orbs in PvE, can no longer be upgraded to help you survive the new raids or pinnacle activities. For the casual PvP player, this means they will now have to redo the grind and masterwork of all their gear each season to be relevant in Trials. This will give PvE players with ample time to grind the edge in getting Pinnacle gear, getting a higher light and then ruling Trials, which is the exact scenario that caused Bungie to nerf the artifact light in Trials and Iron Banner to create balance in this season. For the casual PvE player, this means that whatever gear drops they will likely have to use, regardless of its roles, to meet the new light requirements to complete the other in-game activities. With the high cost of time and resources to upgrade your gear, it'll be less likely that casual players will be able to grind for good pinnacle gear roles, or even lower odds that they'll be able to acquire resources to masterwork them. The final issue that may not have been complained about as much as the previous ones is vault space. By requiring users to move forward to get new gear, but allowing them to keep their old gear and play with that as well, vault space will be even more limited than it was before. Let's take a moment to look at the activities that will and will not be affected by the sun setting. Trials of Osiris, Iron Banner, whatever the newest rate is for the season, Nightfalls and Grandmaster Nightfalls will all be greatly affected by sunsetting. These individual events will require you to go out and grind pinnacle gear to get the higher light gear to be competitive in these. To be able to do the Grandmaster Nightfall, you're going to need the top light gear. Trials of Osiris is the exact same thing. You're not going to be able to hold your own in Trials if you're 10, 15 light levels below. Remember at the beginning of this season what it was like when it was just three or four light levels lower and how much of a difference it made. Activities that are not affected are going to be Crucible, Comp, and all of your regular playlist Crucible that's listed as light level not in effect activity. 
rate up to and including Garden of Salvation will not be affected, so any gear that you have for those raids will be perfectly fine for this season and possibly for next season too. So whatever the next raid is that comes out, you will likely be able to use the gear in it, but you will not be able to upgrade it to the newest light in that gear. So it's kind of like how Garden of Salvation was. You had a 9 30 light level to get into it and a 9 40 to be competitive at the boss level. So the same things are coming into effect. These are where we'll start to see these play into our loadouts. The lowest level Nightfall will likely still be viable to use your old gear in just because I think currently it's a 970 light level, so down the road it's most likely going to stay low enough that any random guardian will be able to participate in the nightfall. Patrol areas in the planets where you go and get your resources and do your public events and your patrols, all those are going to stay light level immune, so they'll be able to go do whatever and it won't be affected by sunsetting. And the same with your basic strikes that you do in the playlist for Zavala. All of those, you should not need pinnacle gear, and the sun setting will not affect you. Currently, the way Gambit is set up is that players of different light levels are all in an equal playing field on the PvE aspect, but the PvP aspect is light-driven. So, if a Guardian at 1032 is playing with a Guardian who's 919 light, the ads will be equally balanced for each of them. They will find they both take the same amount of shot with the same weapon, regardless that these two guardians are completely different light levels. However, should an invader come over at a 965 light level, he would be decimated by a 1032 light level guardian as they're playing light level enabled crucible, if you will, between the two of them. So, if for example, one team has three guys wearing gambit armor, a 965 invader, a 1002 collector, and a 919 sentry, and a regular noob runs over at 1032 light, he'd find himself harvesting up the other guardians as if they weren't even trying. Not even wearing armor, he has a full advantage due to the new light capping element. This completely ruins the reason to play Gambit Prime in your armor unless, in fact, you are willing to go back through Reckoning to regrind your gear each season to keep up with the people who aren't doing it and have a light advantage over you in the activity. Alternative solutions that Bungie could have used to solve the problems they were addressing with sunsetting would be seasonal buffs to offense or defense. A full set of seasonal gear, or four pieces and an exotic in the season, could easily be given a 10% buff to hit points in pinnacle activities. For example, the raids, Iron Banner, or even the Seraph Tower bounties. Another option would be in the gear to give a 5% buff to weapon damage instead of a 10% buff to hit points. These could be implemented in one of two ways. You could either have a mod on the armor, the same as the Transcendent Blessing or Riven's Curse in the Great Hunt armor, or a toggle of some form that appears on the artifact, allowing you to choose between the offensive or defensive buff. Recoding would have been minimal work, as the code used to calculate the Transcendent buff on the Great Hunt armor could be used and just add a checksum to determine if all pieces of armor are equipped. Artifact buffed seasonal gear could implement match game for their protected guardian. A full set of void gear, for example, could assist against solar or arc burn. Now making loadouts and pinnacle crucible more relevant. Recluse could be good against void shields, but the seasonal black widow, pretty much the same gun with the solar burn, is needed to make quick work of solar shields. The Master at Arms perk would, for example, fall off at the end of the season, making it only a partially useful light frame submachine gun. Spare rations may be able to take two shots to clear an arc shield, but Luna's Howl would take three, and its sister weapon Bolt could do it in one, since it had a matching buff. Existing weapons would be useful, while not necessarily top tier as their seasonal counterparts. The seasonal buffs, being able to fall off at the end of the season, would allow these top tier weapons to be powerful, but then obsolete at the end of the season. Stronger Guardians is another way they could address the power creep. 
Adding 100 hit points to all guardians would even change how certain weapons were used. For example, aggressive sniper rifles could still potentially one-tap a headshot, where rapid frame sniper rifles would take two shots or team shooting to take the guardian down. Having worked in the computer industry, I know when tens of hundreds of hours have gone into making a new system, it's there. The opportunity to evade that change has gotten away. So let's look at what, what the changes will instill and then a possibility of how to create a happy medium between the new changes and the customer's desires. In this mock scenario, Callus has declared war on the Guardians. He's going to fly his Leviathan and swallow up the Traveler, and our mission is to break into the Leviathan and take out the engine so that he can't swallow up the Traveler and turn it into purple stardust for his throne room floor. So in the first scenario, I go ahead and break out my Titan, and I put on all my Leviathan gear. I've got Shielded Hand for the melee kill, giving me a 20% damage resistance. I've got my Energy Weapon Kill Buff that gives me 15% energy damage after I kill an enemy with my Energy Weapon. Giving Hand gives me Heavy Ammo after a melee kill. Emperor's Blaze, which gives me a 25% buff to solar damage abilities while on Leviathan, and Power Overwhelming, which gives me 15% power buff to power weapons after a power weapon kill. So after I get all my gear on with current weapons equipped, I try to activate a pinnacle activity, and as you can see, I'm not at the correct light level. Now for the next scenario, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run only the arms with Giving Hand and the rest of my equipment is up to date, up to light equipment. Now with this, my light level is much higher because I'm only using the one special piece of armor. Now when doing this, I am actually able to activate the pinnacle activities and in this scenario, if there was a Leviathan raid, I would be able to go in there with just one old piece of gear and still be able to do the pinnacle activity while getting the perks of the old armor. Okay, so let's say you're not in a Gambit Prime, you're not a PvP-only player, so your resources aren't limited as far as where you get your pinnacles and where you get your gear. You don't have a favorite weapon. Your PvE loadouts don't matter, either because you don't play in game activities or because you feel that whatever the new meta is, you'll be able to work with. Well. What's in it for you to allow these players who care about their old equipment get their old equipment? My answer to that is, what is the community starved for as far as new lights that don't have time and resources invested into all this old gear? Well, looking at LFG, they're starved to get into raids and to get PvP carries. I continually see people say, please teach me last wish. Please help me get to Fabled. What if we could find a way to meet both parties' needs at the same time. I think the happy medium is for Bungie to bait players to use the new gear and to introduce a pinnacle spear, which I'll speak more on in a second. First off, let's start with the seasonal gear. I think the way that they should have done the auto rifle buff that they did for an example would be to buff the auto rifles that came out for the season, or just buff all the seasonal gear. Everything 7th Seraph has a buff to impact or a buff to range or a buff to reload depending on what the weapon is. Just give it a strong buff that other weapons of its kind don't necessarily have. That will draw people towards those weapons and then at the end of the season when that seasonal buff goes away it's done and there's no reason to nerf stuff at the end of the season like they did with snipe rifles giving it a buff at the beginning of the season and nerfing it at the end. They buffed auto rifles and sadly the weapons used were the hard light and the sheriff's regime. I mean I personally didn't see any 7th Seraph carbines out there. Admittedly there were some summoners being used but choosing where to buff their weapons or armor could drastically influence players use on them. If the weapons that they are putting out have a seasonal buff that make them more powerful than the regular ones, people are going to be using those, not their own half dandy or whatever their preferred weapon is from the past. Focusing on these weapons, on this season stuff, is really the way to go to get people to use them. The second part of the implementation 
that I'd suggest be added is the Pinnacle Sphere. A uh, Pinnacle Sphere is basically a piece of equipment that you can acquire the same way as a Ascendant Shard that allows a player a one-time upgrade of an item to a plus 10 light max so they can raise whatever their max light is on a single piece of equipment. Now, before people at Bungie get upset about this, hear the contingency on this. This isn't a item that you can go buy for Glimmer or trade in for enhancement cores. This is a piece of equipment that can only be acquired from doing Sherpas. Whether it's a PvP Sherpa of 900 points, which is carrying someone two levels up to Fabled or one level up to Legend, or a Sherpa carry on a raid. That way the people that are getting these are the ones that are giving back to the community. And it's also bringing more interest into outdated attention that people have been begging for a reason to go back into these raids. So I think a pinnacle sphere that is earned and has a rare drop, kind of like an exotic drop in a raid from doing this means that the people that really want this are the people that are going to go in, that are going to grind the old content, and that are going to be helping the new lights through. It's building community. It's building camaraderie between the old heads that have all the equipment and that don't want to let it go, and all the young people that are like, there's so much here, what do you really need that crap for? There's new stuff coming all the time. Well, they don't know because they haven't tried to grind out a mind vendress with the perfect role. They haven't upgraded armor that took days if not weeks because you're a casual player to max it all out to get the nice stat roll that you want they're still learning a lot of the systems and this is a chance for the older players to go back and help the newer players instead of just posting an lfg post saying hey i'm looking to do a scourge of the past 10 plus clears only and this is the way to bring the old content relevance to get people playing the old content again to get people helping the newer generation get in there and learn the stuff that they want to learn to help them get the Luna's howl from getting their hand cannon kills and from getting fabled and getting the recluse even if the recluse isn't the most powerful weapon it's a way for them to get their starter weapons to get them out into the world it's a baseline that we can give them to say hey Start off by trying to get these because these will help you to get into in-game activities to get the pinnacle gear. Or these will help you to get through the whisper mission so that you can get this exotic. This is the way the game was designed to be played and let's not take that grind element out. And let's not you know, make the old gear more relevant than the new gear. But there is ways of highlighting the new seasonal gear by adding buffs to it that go away at the end of the season so it's the most desirable the season you're in it but the old gear can still be something to grind for it to build a baseline to do the new pinnacle activities because last season's gear isn't going to be as good as this season's gear and next season's gear but that doesn't mean that like that one item that we have like that mountaintop that you've got 9,000 kills on that shouldn't be banned from trials just because it's an older piece of gear but it's ultimately up to Bungie. Uh, I'm going to throw legal stuff here at the end. Uh, this is more for Bungie than the player base. Uh, I give you guys full ownership of all my sunsetting ideas in this video. I hold no ownership over it. I will not in any shape or form at any period in time request any compensation for giving you these ideas if you choose to implement them. I'm willing to sign any legal documentations you would wish to send to me to validate that you know this is free and clear you can use the ideas i believe that the options i show here like highlighting with seasonal perks like a master at arms thing on a recluse mock with a different burn that it loses the master at arms at the end of the year that the seasonal stuff getting a buff that drops off when the artifact goes away and the pinnacle sphere that yes you can upgrade something but you're doing a lot of grind for a rare drop that can upgrade one thing so you may be able to bring your one or two pieces but at the end of the day it's going to be more viable to use the new season stuff 
These are solutions that meet Bungie's goals of wanting to get people back in the grind, want to build the interest in the new stuff. It helps to phase the stuff out after a season, and it helps people keep the stuff that they have spent weeks, months, or even years trying to get to. Please consider our needs as much as your own. Thank you for everyone that's made it this far in the video, and hopefully this all works out for us. <laughs> Laters.